All right, so Bezrat Hashem. Last shiur, we finish with the karpas, the explanation of the karpas. And we addressed how we're, we're building Kadesh, right? A, a direction or hearts, proactivity with Netilat Yadayim. Karpas, we eat, we eat the, uh, the maror, we eat the maror. We did the karpas, right? Yes, yes, we spoke about the karpas and eating a little bit and appreciating it. That's right, appreciating uh, the, the basics. And now we, after we have a, an assessment of reality of what we have to appreciate, we get into yahats. What is yahats? Yahats, we take, uh, we know that on, in the Kara we have three matzot. We take the middle matzah and we're going to cut it in uh, two, por two, two pieces, one big piece and one small piece. We try, according to Kabbalah, to make a hay. We try to make a hay, if possible. We don't have to go, go uh, you know, we cut it naturally, but to have one big piece, one small piece. The big piece, we're going to keep for the afikomen. The afikoman is what we're going to eat, the matzah we're going to eat before Berkat Amazon, after the, after the meal. And we put back the small piece. Now, obviously, the question is, what does Yahatz really represent? So, Chachamim tell us that we, we need to read the Haggadah, right? With the Lehem Oni, with bread of the poor. Right with food of the poor, so Chachamim the Gemara tells us what is the the, the, the same way the poor eats uh, a, a piece of bread that's not complete. So us too, we're going to take a matzah and we're going to cut it. We and the big piece goes for the afikoman. Why the big piece for the afikoman? Just because the, so that we can keep the small piece with us and start the agada with a feeling of incompletion of something that's really that's missing that's missing another another reason why we do uh, we do yahats it's also to uh, stimulate the kids to stimulate the kids so that uh, they can uh, go and, and and take the matzah hide the matzah or find the matzah so now, if we, we dive a little bit into the, the concept of yahats, we learn something, we, we learn something beautiful. We are, we are about to start the, the Magid. And the yahat, Chachamim tell us, represents a, the, the, the uh, Acknowledgement of the pain of the exile, all the, all the suffering Am Israel had at the time of, the, of Egypt. That's the small piece, the piece of the poor. It also represents the challenge of Kriat Yamsuf, of the separation of the sea, the fear Am Israel had right before splitting the sea, uh, facing the sea. The, the, the Egyptians behind us and on both sides, uh, the, the mountains and the, 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 you know, the uh, snakes and the scorpions, etc. So it's an acknowledgement, an acknowledgement of pain, an acknowledgement of pain. But it's a pain that we bring about. It's not a half matzah that was baked half matzah. It's we take a full matzah and we, can, we, we break it. Chazal come to teach us that in life, sometimes you need to break in order to build. It's important to recognize the moment of pain and the, important, the importance of the pain in order to get to the final result, which is the Afikoman, which is the Geula. 
a lot of people, the nature of people is to try to forget moments of challenges or not to let go of certain things. There's a comfort level and we're not ready to break in order to build. We like the comfort zone. Yachatz comes after we, we've, we've shown appreciation, we've, we've, we've overcome or we are aware that we need to overcome the animalistic instinct of the desire of eating in the kafas. Now we need to learn to also have patience and see the true value in failure. Also, we need to recognize that sometimes painful seizures, painful breakup are here to allow us to build ourselves stronger. It's an outlook, an outlook where we proactively recognize the benefits of the challenges instead of being in denial and not wanting to face them and think about them and learn from them, but also the recognition that there's a process, there is a, a, a direction to that, to that challenge. That challenge is not the end, it's a means to the end. And it's extremely important to recognize that in order to enter the Magid, in order to be able to understand what Am Yisrael really went through during, during its Yad Mitzrayim. It's internalizing again the challenges, learning from them, and finding the strength and the courage to detach ourselves and sometimes to break up certain things in order to build something bigger and greater. That's the yachatz. Rav? Yes. How, how, how do you think about, you know, because when you go through a challenge, it's human nature to sometimes forget after you move forward. How do you hold on to that feeling in a, in a positive way to move forward? Very good. If you look at, if you look at what Yahatz is and what we keep, we keep the little piece of matzah. This is the piece of matzah we're gonna eat for Motsi matzah. It's, what does that mean? And we're gonna to get to it in, a, in when we talk about Motsi matzah. But you basically take the challenge Piece, the piece of oni, the piece of that makes you feel poor, weak, uh, unsettled, incomplete, right? And you benefit from it. You learn lessons from it. A person fails. A person is missing certain things. A person did a lot of efforts and he feels that he wasn't, he feels like an ani, like an ani, like a poor person, yeah? He must learn something from that from from that experience. What? Can, how can I benefit from this? Sometimes it's not what you did. Sometimes it's what you didn't do. So, learning from from your challenges, learning from your failures, is an important trait if you want to be able to connect to. First of all, you see at Mitzrayim on the proper level, but also to be be to be to be in peace with yourself and find from a time that seems to be a waste of time, benefit, knowledge, lessons for life. Yahat. Yahat. What what but the point that I'm trying to make here is that not you cannot only see that that failure as a whole. It's a piece of a bigger picture, right? It's a piece that actually connects to the Afikoman to make the full matzah. It's there one chapter of the book. 
There is an end result. There is a better future. That's the emuna. The Zohar Kadosh calls this the the bread of emuna. The bread of emuna. It's understanding that the failure is a step to the success. It's not an isolated situation. You can isolate it if you don't know how to deal with it. If you're stuck with it. But if you understand that the failure is a, an integral part of the entire matzah, then it's a question of time that, uh, you know, before that step in the process will get you to the success. It's understanding that these coexist. You don't have failure and then you have success. No, no. Failure brings you to success. Perfectly clear. Thank you. This is Yahatz. This is Yahatz. Right? So, again, uh, Arachiki speaking, the, we, like, like I said, uh, we take the matzah, we crack it, we try to make a hay, and we, the, the big piece, we're going to hide it. Okay? So, like, and, uh, and we're going to let the kids eventually during the meal go and look for it so that we stimulate, we keep them awake and interested, and the small piece will be part of the motzi that we're going to be eating for motzi matzah. Now, what's also very interesting is that the one of the te'amim, why, one of the reasons why we do yahat is to engage with the children, to get the children to take the matzah, to find the matzah, to hide the matzah, there is also a very important message there. Sometimes in order to find the Yeshua, in order to transit from a, 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 a moment of pain to a moment of joy, from a moment of distress and failure to a moment of success, we need to be open to listen to the youth. We need to be able to engage with the youth. To, we tend to be stuck with a, a stereotype that you know what that ah, the youth cannot teach me anything. I learn from everybody. I engage the part part of the process of my success of my transition in life is to also integrate the wisdom and the encouragement and the dynamism of, of the youth in my life. Take advantage of it. Learn from it. Implement it. Good? Yes. Yes. That's Yahat. So, Kadesh, direction, Uhat's proactivity to purify, Karpas, the recognition of control on ourselves, and the Akarat Atov for the most basic, Yahat's recognizing the challenges, the place of the challenge and success and how, it, and it's so important because if we want to grow in life and we want to engage in change, we need to know what to do with our past. We need to, do, to know what to do with our failures, with our, uh, with our flaws. And it's only once we recognize what we can learn from our flaws and how we can better ourselves that we can align ourselves with a real future, with a real success story. We cannot hide or run away from who we are. We have to learn from it, grow with it. This is Yahat. And only then, only then we can enter Magid. Only then we can start diving 
and start and, and connect with the, all the messages the Haggadah and Chachamim have to teach us. Once we have the perspective and, uh, and the coalition and the right place where, we, where fits the, the challenge in our life. And then we enter Magid. So just to, uh, to put things in perspective, first of all, we have to know that Magid is a mitzvah minat Torah. It's one of the mitzvot of the Torah that we accomplish on, on the night of the Seder to, to talk about and learn about Yitziat Mitzrayim. Now, the, uh, the obvious question that we all ask, okay, and we're gonna, we're gonna go into it in a second, is my Nishtana, every night we say Kriyat Shema, every night we talk about Yitziat Mitzrayim. So what do we need to accomplish on the night of the Seder more than what we already do every night? So first of all, every night, we don't tell a story to anyone. We talk to ourselves. It's a self-awareness versus the night of the Seder where we talk to someone, where we, we talk to our, we, to, to our kids. The interaction with someone. Number two, every night we state facts. Facts. Here, it's a question and answer. Very dynamic, very dynamic. Three, every night we just remember a commemoration of what has happened versus a, a, a dive into the, the, what really happened on an emotional level, on, on an on a imaginative level, on a sensory level, we try to emulate again everything that has happened at the time. And obviously, every night, the mitzvah is to, like we said, to just to remember what happened then. Chaim Tovi. The level of the seder, we, we need to leave the seder with concrete teachings with concrete and practical lessons that we bring home. So just, just to put things uh, in, uh, in perspective or in between the difference there is of it, what, we, what we refer to as Yitzhak Mitzrayim every night and the Lela Sinai. Now, the Ramchal, the Ramchal, just to touch one, one more point on that, the Ramchal, we, we've addressed it in the many, many times. In Derech Hashem says that Lela Seder is a, re, a, a, a revelation from HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself that infuses and, and, and reveals to the creation the exact same intensity, the exact same energy, the exact same intention he had the night he took Am Israel out of Egypt. So there is a He'ara. It's the circular time that we've been discussing so many times. It's a, it's a, it's a night where HaKadosh Baruch Hu showers his presence on an extreme level. And it's up to us to just tap into it, connect to it, each on their own level. So it's not, it's not, it's not a storytelling of a, of a situation that happened then. No, 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 no. It's a real, it's a real experience that we're having right now. It's a real connection that we are having with Akadosh Baruch Bech Vodo Be'atzmo. Exactly the same way Bnei Israel felt and interacted with HaKadosh Baruch Hu when they left Egypt. And it's important to try to crystallize this, to grasp a moment of that connection. Because that moment of connection is what we're going to hold on to 
for the rest of the year. And this is the moment. This is the moment where we can really feel Chirut. We can really feel the, uh, the freedom. The freedom. That connection, Chachamim say, the connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that and, and, and again, it's, it's words, but it's really an experience. There's a moment of a high, a moment of clarity, a moment of, 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 of love that we experience that night that tastes and refers to the true experience of freedom. The more we can grasp of that in the Lela Seder, and the more we will bring, we will carry with us during the year that he'ara, that aura, that influence in our lives. So, one question. I don't know if it's the issue, but in fundamentals, you said that there are three times where there's lots of energy coming in Kabbalah Shabbat, in the repetition of Shacharit. And yes. The third one, I, and Brit Mila. Brit Mila. Okay. Here is also another similar situation that lots of energy is coming. Yes, but it's a completely different. Yes, but it, it's it's there. It's the 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 Gilui, the Gilui from the Ima. versus the night of the Seder, which is Lel Shimurim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, B'chvodo V'atmo, himself, comes down and showers the world with his presence. It's, it's, yes, it's a revelation, but on a completely different level and for a completely different reason. Okay, it's another story. It's, it, it's, it's, yes, yes, it's a little different. It's a little different. Okay. Until now, everything good? Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Uh, we will touch, we will touch now the first Haggadah, the first Haggadah in Magid. But before that, uh, we have an introduction. We have an introduction to the Haggadah that we've, uh, we've, uh, we've addressed in the past, if you remember the, the four different Haggadot. I don't know if you have, uh, you, you saw what I sent uh, on the chat, but okay. So that will give you a little bit of visual uh, understanding of the structure of the Haggadot. So we, we start with a statement. Before we start talking about the actual Agada, we start with a statement. We say, anya. Here is the, the bread of the poor, the poor bread. The Achlu Avatana Be'arad Israel that our forefathers ate in Egypt. Kol Dichfin, whoever is hungry. Yeteve Echol should come and eat. Kol Ditzri Yeteve Ipsa, whoever uh, needs should come and eat Korban Pesach with us. Ashtacha, here now we are here. Lishana Babe Arad Israel, next year Bezrat Hashem in Israel. This year, Ashta Avde, this year we are. Still, Avadim, Leshana, Ba'ab, and Echorim. Next year, hopefully, we will be redeemed with the venue of Mashiach. And obviously, obviously, there is uh, an important question that we have to ask ourselves, right? Is why do we need to say Halach Ma'anya? Okay, here is the bread. Whoever wants to come should come and eat. <laughs> Does anyone ever scream, hey, whoever wants to come, come and eat and somebody actually join? We know, we know who's here, we know who's not coming. It's like, 
It's a, it's, it's a statement that's almost a joke, right? Who are we fooling? Whoever wants to come and eat, please come. Who are you talking to? Nobody's listening. And there's maybe nobody on the street. Maybe it's not being there physically. What do you mean? Maybe, maybe it's an invitation for the people who are there to really, you know, embrace what's happening on a spiritual level. Okay. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. First of all, just so you know, just so you know, at the time, at the time, it was a real statement. Because the, the people could not do the, the Korban Pesach on their own. So they used to gather, they used to gather many families or few families. And, uh, and once the Korban Pesach were, uh, came, so they called and said, honey, oh, please come, come, come and uh, come, come eat. So there is a basic uh, historical fact and reasoning behind this. But like you're saying, like we're saying today, we shouldn't be saying it because anyways, it's not, uh, it's not so shayach. But I think there is a very important message, very important message. The Shla Kadosh, the Shla Kadosh tells us the following. He says the real way to be free is when you actually care about others. A servant, somebody that, that is yeah, an avid, right? A servant cannot think about anybody else. He has to think about himself. He is so distressed and he is so torn with the work afflicted upon him that he doesn't have the time to think or the brain to think about others. This is the Yetzirah of Paro, right? Ah, you, about, on Am Israel. When he saw that Moshe comes, that he has their attention, you know what he does? Okay, no problem. Let's make you work even more and you won't have time to think about anything. A servant cannot think about others. That's the definition of a servant. A, a, a free person, somebody that, that benefits and enjoys freedom is somebody that has the heart and the attention and the bandwidth to feel for others. That's the, uh, the uh, fundamental uh, uh, difference between somebody that's free and somebody that's a servant. What we're saying right now is that we're, we're screaming that we are free. When we, we, we're, it's not about, it's not about who's listening. It's about awaking the kindness of our heart, the, the, the uh, determination to want to be part of Am Israel, the freedom, the, ex the exile of Am Israel took individuals and made them into a people, right? The freedom consolidated the, the, the Israelites, if you will, that used to live in Egypt. And we became a people. Freedom made us a people, connected us all together. When we call everybody, whoever is hungry, whoever needs, come. It's not about who's listening. It's about awaking by saying it, your sensitivity, your care, your sense of obligation, of responsibility to the community. To Klal Israel. That's how we start. And this is where we belong. On Pesach, we need to remind ourselves, we need to announce clearly that it's not about us. It's not about my table. It's not about me. All this, it's about the connection to Am Israel. The responsibility we bear for Am Israel. That's the difference. But also, 
when, when you remember or when you pay attention to the need of someone, of a needy, it also puts in perspective all the berachot that you have. When, you when, you, when, when you're sensitive to the poor, it creates that contrast. Wow. Look what I have, Baruch Hashem. I'm, you know, I'm the one that can now allow others to come. Chachamim, come and set the tone. You want to be free? You want to be connected? You want to feel responsible for others? By addressing their needs, not only that you bring that awareness to your attention and that creates sensitivity, but you also appreciate everything that you have. Another way, another way to create a paradox that on one end addresses the poor, addresses the weak, addresses the, addresses the need and the void, but through the contrast of what we have, the beracha that we have, also appreciate and thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If you recall, that's also something we learn in, in, in Shira Shirim, how Shalom HaMelech constantly during the third Nevu'ah balances out, right? The interaction there is between the body and the Neshama. This is, this is the Avodah here. Halach Ma'anya. This is to set the tone. Once we have these two channels open, sensitivity and appreciation, now we can start. So what that's coming to teach us is that I will need both pipeline, both vectors, both traits in order to connect to the, 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 the different Agadot, to the night of the Senya. On one end again, the sensitivity, and on the other, the appreciation, the hakaratatu. Good? All right. So now we're entering the, the first the first Hagada. Just gonna open the Agada so that okay. So we start with what? We start with my Nishtana Alailaze. We have the answer Avadimayinu me paro. Then we have Maase Berabi Yeze Verabi Ushua Verabi Azab Nazara Verabi Akiba, they all gathered together in Bnebrak. And then we have the statement of Rabbi Azar Ben Azaria. I am all, I look like I'm 70 years old and all my life I've been waiting to understand. Do we talk about Yitzhak Mitzrayim at night until when Ben Zoma came, right? And then conclusion, thank, we're thankful to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we say Baruch HaMakom, Baruch Hu, Baruch Shantan Torah Lamo Yisrael, Baruch Hu. Okay, so a few points, again, we're you know, 40,000 feet uh, high level, yeah? But a few points or point of reference. Right? We're all going to sing it. The kids are going to sing it. The question why we ask questions, we've addressed already. 
to trigger the interest to uh, and and the, the engagement of the children and the and the awakening within us to want to change right? you can only change if you're willing to ask questions and get answers right so it's a place where we're opening ourselves for change and we're we're willing to make a difference we're willing to make a difference and we said also we ask some questions that don't really make sense because we want to show that it's not about the question but it's about the engagement in you know on the night of the sin but i have a question a very big question the terminology that we use, what changed tonight from all the nights? It's not from the Gemara, it's from Chazal. It's from the Gemara in Pesachim. And what I don't understand is why the, the, the words what changed the night from all the nights? Why can't we say, why do we eat matzah tonight? Why do we eat maror tonight? Why do we dip twice tonight? Why do we need to say what changed from all the night? Tonight from all the nights. You understand my question? The, the formula of manishtana is too complicated for me. If it's just a question, it doesn't make it, it you can you can ask the question in a straightforward way without putting too many words. But isn't it kind of like with Habdallah, you know, the Habdil bin Kodesh the whole we show the contrast? Yes. But it, it's not enough. It's not enough. Here you have to understand. What, what are we, when we say what, what are we focusing on? Like I, like I said, if the, 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 simple, the simple understanding is, okay, ask anybody, okay, tell me the four things, and I'm sure before I ask the questions, most of us had the same, the same uh, you know, assumption. Why do we eat matzah tonight? Why do we eat maror tonight? That's the question. That's the, that's the question. No, that's not the question. That's not the question. The answer you have, you're, you're saying it, Mikoach, the question, because there's a question. On that question, you understand what I'm saying? Because we, we don't understand that, that for, for that the, the, the words. If you want to be a Ben Chorim, and if we see how it's, very consistent, very consistent. It's not about, it's not about the matzah that you eat tonight. It's not about the maror. It's not about how many times you tovel or, or you, you, you drink mesubin or not mesubin. It's about the transition. How did we get to such a transition? How did we come? from being avadim to becoming uh, and, and becoming now free and eating the matzah. Manishtana, what led to that? What changes? And again, and, and, and that's going back to what you're saying, Stanley. It's through the contrast, through the paradox of the pain versus the, the, the gain, right? And the joy that we can, understand and appreciate the matzah. The matzah is not just something you eat. It's not some, uh, something that you, that you inherit. No, you don't inherit beracha. You don't inherit a status. You get to it, you work it. And the only way you can benefit from it is if you understand the process that led to that beracha. Manishtana is let me understand what I had to go through, what my, our forefathers had to go through to get to where I am today. An acknowledgement of effort, of ups and downs and sacrifices, challenges. 
recognizing it's it's going back and extrapolating the yachats is recognizing that you know what i cannot just focus on what i i, I inherited today you know what Baruch Hashem, what do you want from me now today ah Baruch Hashem, every, I have everything we're we're blessed with everything this is status quo Mapito, no it's not status quo there has been a lot of sacrifice efforts that has, that has been done for generations. And in, it's only through this that the man Ishtana, now I can ask it to myself, how do I now change myself and also make myself better? How do I now implement, how do I go from Hametz to Matzah, from being an Eved to becoming Mesubin and, and being a free man? The challenge of that question is something we will carry throughout the year. This is the petiha, the petiha. Tell you that, that no, it, it, I'm just saying that that connects back to your earlier point about carrying the challenges as part of the journey with you. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's reinforcing the same idea. Exactly, bravo. It's just you see how we're building. It's, it's not random. It's building. It's building. Now that we've 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 Yahat, okay, we've uh, we've we've said the concept. Okay, now we're diving into it. Now we implement uh, implementing it in our own essence. Now we're asking ourselves, How do I change? This is the This is the question. Each, each one, you're preparing yourself more emotionally to get to that pinnacle at the end. Yes, yes, yes. What brought the change? What do I learn from it? And it's, it's, it's putting you on the spot because now you that you understand my nishta now, how can you live the rest of the night of the seder with you know what i'm satisfied i'm accomplished it's impossible if if this is the feeling you have you're stuck you're stuck no the whole avoda what makes me free the freedom the freedom chazal tell us the freedom is what is the opportunity to say manishtada when you ask yourself the question when you introspect, when you challenge yourself, this is freedom. This is freedom. Rob, one question, a practical one. All this uh, we are studying now. How do we do this? Uh, in the middle of the cellar with the kids and the family and they want to eat and all this and in the middle reflect on all these things it's like <laughs> very good to the study before uh, or so 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 first of all the agada is something that needs to be studied not one month or two months before pesach it's a project of its own it's wow. a project of its own. but but the, the point of the Lela Seder is to convey, to convey what you can to the kids, internalize what you can to yourself. And, uh, and, yeah, Hashem, and, yeah, Hashem, and you, by the way, and you have the whole Pesach, right? You have the whole Pesach. The Lela Seder is setting the tone. It's setting the tone. So if you understand, okay, now this is what we're, listen, again, your manishtana will never be the same. Now it's not about why manishtana, why do we eat matzah tonight? No, 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 no. This is how we get to matzah. This is me saying it, I'm screaming manishtana. When we sing manishtana, we all sing it, we are free. And we are the product of, of sacrifice, the product of efforts of generations after generations. And if we are today, the manishtana, the questions that we ask is anger to all these efforts and we need to recognize it we need to appreciate it and continue with it okay now me what do i know now? now if i ask the question i have to know i have to be able to ask myself i have to have and find answers
So what's the answer to Manishtana? What's the answer to Manishtana? Avadim Ahinu. Right? Avadim Ahinu le paro be Mitzrayim. Ve'utzienu Hashem elokenu misham be'yad chazaka b'zwa netuya. And we say, ve'afilu kulanu chachamim, kulanu nevonim, kulanu yodim al Torah Torah. Mitzvah alenu le saper b'yitziyat Mitzrayim. Ve'kol amar ve'lisaper b'yitziyat Mitzrayim, ala zemi shubah. Not only we have to tell the story, we have to tell the story in detail. In detail. In detail. What, what type of answer is that? What type of answer is that? We say, we say, my nishtana. You know what, my nishtana? What changes? or the ability to say, how am I changing? What changed in me from last year? What changed in me, Manishtana? What changed in me? Did I, did I grow? I didn't grow. I went backwards. I went forward. Is only if you recognize that it's only if you recognize it's by recognizing Avadim that you can you can start answering your question. If you want to grow, you have to go back to the to Bereshit, like we say. I'll give you an example. Zechono Livracha. Shlomo Ben Shoshana. Yeah. Was he, was he born the way he left? Far from it, right? Probably the odds were against him. So how can we appreciate his accomplishment? Just by saying what he, who he was at the end or by acknowledging who he was when he came to this world and all the efforts and all the challenges. This is how we appreciate. This is Avadi Maini. We're stating, and we're not saying Avde Paro Ainu. We don't say Avde Paro Ainu. We were the servants of Paro. We were servants to Paro. A big difference. If you are the, the servants of Paro, he controls you. But if you are the if you are servants to Paro, that's his way of looking at you. We were not his servant. He, he looked at us and treated us like servants. But you know what? The more I understand, the more I dig in the past, the more I, 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 I learn about the process and the more I recognize I was never a servant. The more I recognize that there was a path, a path for Am Israel, a direction, there's a mission, and I'm only here to continue the mission. This is Abadi Mayinu Lepavon. And how do we prove this? And the Chachamim say, be careful. Don't stop on a high level. Go into details. Bring to life those challenges. Emotionally. Make it vibrant, make it vibrant. And it doesn't have to be only those words. It's experiences that reflect the idea of Avadima Lepao. No, life can you know, maybe maybe you work for someone, maybe life treats you like you're an employee. Life treats you, treats you like you are a, a servant, but you are not a servant. And that was said since day one. And it's only through this recognition that you can break through. That hope, that hope, that hope. Ah, and why do I need hope now? Because I overwhelmed myself by all these questions. My Nishana, okay. How did I get to what I am today? And now I'm asking myself the question, how do I move forward? It's a big responsibility. It's very overwhelming. So what do I need? I need hope. I need hope. At times where now I'm challenged with my own, my own purpose in life, 
my own accomplishments, my own identity, very difficult. If, and if you're satisfied, you go, that's it, Khalas, close your eyes, and go home. So for sure you're now in a place where you're, if, if you read the Agala properly, where you're gonna be stuck, overwhelmed by a lot of emotions, of a lot of Yetzirah, darkness, confusion. Okay. Go, build your hope now, build your hope. You will never have it. And dive into it. And what, what Chachamim do? They're going to go and they're going to bring us something that has nothing to do with the Haggadah. Ma'aseh berabi Eliezer, berabi Yoshua, berabi Azar ben Azariah, berabi Akiva, berabi Tachon. The story that happens in the house of Rabbi Akiva in Bnei Brak, Lela said, who cares? Ma kesher with it, Yad Mitzrayim. It, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. This portion of Masib Rabbi Eliezer and Amar Rabbi Azar ben Azariah, what, what do you learn from this about Yetziad Mitzrayim? Nothing. Okay, so they stayed all night and they, they, they said, the, they said the, the stories about Yetziad Mitzrayim. Okay, but how does that help me? So we need to know, we need to know that Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yehoshua were the teachers of Rabbi Akiva. The teachers of Rabbi Akiva. Yet, they came to Rabbi Akiva. Since when the teachers go to the student? I'm just putting things in perspective here. Number two, we have to keep in mind that it's a time where the Romans already started killing we don't see here the Gedolim. We don't see the Gedolim. So what's going on here? Rabbi Akiva, and uh, I don't know, maybe you remember last year we addressed it quickly in one of the shurim, represents the hope. How do we know that? Because we know the story when Rabbi Akiva and Chachamim were working the rooms of Yerushalayim and they saw, they saw a shual, they saw a fox coming out of the Beit HaMikdash and they started crying and he started laughing. So they told him, Akiva, how can you laugh? How can you smile at the time of destruction? And you see a fox, an animal, impure animal coming out of the Beit HaMikdash. So he said, if that prophecy of Zechariah was accomplished, that means the prophecy of Zechariah that says that Mashiach will come and the Beit HaMikdash will be rebuilt is also going to happen. And this is why I love Rabbi Akiva is the pivotal point of hope, of hope in times of darkness. It's Rabbi Akiva is the one that finds the light when nobody can see it. This is Rabbi Akiva. So, at the time of pogrom, at the time of distress for Am Israel, all the Chachamim converge around Rabbi Akiva for one central reason. They're looking for light. They're looking for light. This is why, this is why the Baalei Agada brought us this case to tell us that it doesn't matter how overwhelmed you are with your own questions and with your own challenges and with your own aspirations and with your own yetzerara. What's important is to know that the day, the light of the day will come. Like the, 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 the Maase Chazal say, they, wait, they stayed all night long. The night represents the Choshev, represents darkness, represents confusion, until the time of Kriyat Shema came. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. This is Rabbi Akiva. This is Rabbi Akiva. Is to always find the positive in every situation. This is why Chazal bring us this in the Haggadah. And finally, and finally we have, we have Rabbi Azar ben Azariah, who says something amazing. Well, 
I mean, before Rabbi Azar ben Azariah. It's also a motivation to want to continue the Sadia. Think about it. When a person can be overwhelmed with a lot of questions and then he freezes, it's a handicap. He gets stuck. Okay, where do I go from here? You need the support. You need the push. The same way those Chachamim needed to continue to teach Torah at the time of Pogrom when the when Chachamim were falling right and left. I mean, Rabbi Akiva himself will be killed by the Romans not too long after this, this, this episode. Not that too long after that. And we know the death of Rabbi Akiva. Right? They cut his skin, they killed his skin. And what is Rabbi Akiva focusing on? Doing the tikkun of the Ben Yishayim Ben Yoyada says that it's so difficult to say Bechol Nav Shecha. Rabbi Akiva knew that. So he said, you know what? Let me at that moment do the tikkun of Bechol Nav Shecha for all the generations to come. This is Rabbi Akiva. Motivation, motivation, light. You want to go forward? Chachamim teach us. Rabbi Akiva teach us. You want to continue to go on, no matter what the challenge is, focus on the stream of light. Look for the positivity and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. And, keep going. and then Rabbi Azam and Azaria, who says, I'm like 70 years old, also, now, this is, I mean, it's interesting because also this has nothing to do with the, with, with the Haggadah. It has nothing to do with the Haggadah. Big machloket between uh, the Chachamim, what, does, what did Rabbi Azam and Azariah really mean? Some say that at, the, at his time, we were not saying the third paragraph of Kiyat Shema, of Tzitzit, Others say we were saying it. People are looking at what did Rabbi El Azab and Azariah really meant when he said, I, 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 I look like I'm 70 years old. And uh, we never said Yetziad Mitzrayim at night. What does that mean? Yetziad Mitzrayim at night. You know when, you know how difficult it is in time of challenges to face your own challenge and talk about it. You're in pain, you're in the dark, and we're talking about all the Yetziat Mitzrayim. But the, what is Yetziat Mitzrayim? It's not only going out of Egypt, right? It's everything that happened in Egypt. Come Rabbi Azar ben Azariah, he said, you know, I never thought, I never understood, or never believed somebody that's in pain can reflect and learn from a moment of pain. Until Ben Zoma. And what did Ben Zoma say? Yeme hayecha, yamim kol yeme hayecha, halelot. Kol yeme hayecha, Your life is not made of only yame chayecha, only yamim. Life is not all about days. It's not all about the sun. It's not all about the success. It's not all about that. Call yame chayecha. It's about everything. Yame chayecha, olam azeh. Call yame chayecha liavi limot hamashiach. Olam azeh is the challenges. Call yame chayecha mashiach. Two lessons. Not only that there are days and nights, there are ups and downs. And this gives me chizuk at times when I'm down. If you learn from those moments, during these moments, if you're able to understand and learn from your mistakes while you're in pain of your mistakes, 
then you bring the, then you bring the day closer to you. And he continues and says, is if you understand your purpose in this world, this is what brings Mashiach. Not to think about Mashiach, but to understand your purpose in this world brings Mashiach. This is how you bring Mashiach closer. He says, this I didn't understand. Until what? Until Ben Zoma said it. Because when a person is in the night, when a person is at night, kashe, it's difficult to see the, the, to talk about tzitzit, to talk about the techele, the tachlit, the purpose of the tzitzit. It's difficult to see the light in the dark. But it's only once again, again, you put things in perspective. It's you put things in comparison. You understand the big picture that you can actually in the night, learn from it and grow from it. And this is what led Am Israel out of Egypt. They never lost their emuna. They never lost their belief that they were gonna go out. Never. No matter how painful it was. Ah. There's a way of life in darkness. There's a way out in the deepest challenges. Baruch HaMakom, Baruch Hu. Now I can say Baruch HaMakom. Baruch HaMakom, blesses the Makom, Baruch Hu. Baruch Shatan Torah Le'amo Yisrael, Baruch Hu. Now, not only that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the Makom, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with me at all times. That's Makom. He's with me at all time. No matter where I am, he's with me. Darkness, he's with me. And Baruch Shenatan Torah. And blessed is the one who gave us the Torah to see in darkness the light. No? Any questions? <laughs> I love it. It's so it's so optimistic. It's just uh, you want to carry it with you through everything. That mentality. This is this is keep in mind. This is the geula gashmit. This is the physical geula. This is freedom of the emotions. We're not right now in of the avodah zara. You have been with Mitzrayim. We're not there. We're not talking spiritual. We're talking practical. It's Rabbi Akiva that sees the fox coming out and he smiles and he laughs. It's Rabbi Akiva that comes, that has all his Rabbanim around him and gives them chizuk, emotional. We're not spiritual right now. Right now we're emotional. Find the light in the darkness. This is the first Agada. Strong. Now, how can you do that if you don't have sensitivity you don't, and, and you don't have a karatato? If you're not sensitive, if you're not sensitive to your to the to your situation, and if you don't recognize Akadosh Baruch Hu's involvement in your life, how could you get to that? It's impossible. It's impossible. This is the foundation of the Haggadah. Halachmania. Now it makes sense. And now we know why we can say Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu. It's the right place. At this point, you did the Haggadah. I'm sorry? Okay, yeah? At this, at this point, we already finished one Haggadah. Finish. We finished the, the first Haggadah. How are we doing? Any question? I can't believe we, that's the emotional buildup of just the first Haggadah. That's the first Haggadah. At this point, yeah. we are free emotionally. That's it. Think about it. How amazing and how incredible it is to be able 
to now have the potential that you will carry all year long, all year long, the ability to see light in darkness and, and see the end of the pain now, even though we're inside the pain. This is what we will carry. This is the aura. This is the koach. This is the beracha we internalize and bring with us all year long. Man, this is the, this is the biggest gift. Forget about the rest. In itself, it's the biggest gift. I'm not stuck anymore. And you know what? I'll always be positive. I'll be able to see the, the, the flip side, the positive flip side in every situation. Ah. I'm free. I am emotionally free from what? From my fears, from my depression, from my, my sadness, from my anger, from my uh, exhaustion, from my uh, expectations, frustrations. I'm free. I am emotionally free. I, I think we will need one hour Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, yeah. at least. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we are that's, 4, that's, feet high. I'm just saying. That, that's 4, wanna, okay. Uh, Andy, that's next if year we want to finish the cliff notes. <laughs> yes, yes. I have all my Agada uh, written down. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, I will Beautiful. go simply. <laughs> no question. So, so, okay, okay. So now, now we finish uh, the first I at, at least the first Agada. We did Yahas and the first Agada of uh, uh, the first Agada, the first portion of Magid. <laughs>